Hello and welcome to our presentation. Today we will be talking about anti-sway controllers for overhead cranes. Let us begin by talking about what an overhead crane is. An overhead crane is a type of heavy duty machinery that is used to move extremely large loads from one location to another in a precise manner. An overhead crane utilizes the overhead space in a facility to serve as a means for unloading, loading, moving materials, lifting dies from stamping machines, or feeding raw materials. An overhead crane consists of five main components. Firstly, the trolley is the main part of the crane, which consists of a driving motor. Secondly, the girders serve as a guide for transversive motion, depicted by the red arrow in the diagram on the right. Thirdly, the traveler is the guide for traveling motion, illustrated by the blue arrow in the image on the right. Fourthly, the cable is suspended from a hoist and relates to a hook on the load. Lastly, the payload is the final component of a basic overhead crane system. Why is anti-sway so important on a crane? Anti-sway minimalizes the angle between the hanging load and the trolley that holds it. This prevents the load from shifting forwards or backwards as the trolley accelerates or decelerates. Implementing anti-sway control in an overhead crane reduces the requirements for the qualifications of the crane operator and can also prevent damage to the load, the trolley, or the guidance system that controls the load. To begin the analysis of this problem, some assumptions need to be made in order to make the calculations more manageable. Let us assume two-dimensional motion, the girder beam is rigid, the mass and deflection of the cable are negligible, swinging angle is approximated by the small angle approximation method, and the load and the trolley are to be considered point masses. The free body diagram considers the mass of the trolley, MT, and the mass of the load, ML. Forces acting on the system include the trolley control force, FT, the frictional force between the trolley and the girder, VT times X dot, and the frictional air resistance on the lifted load, VL times theta dot. Dimensional parameters of this free body diagram include the length of the cable, L, the distance from the center of the trolley to a reference point, X, and the angle made between the vertical and swinging masses. These are the parameters used in the analysis of the overhead crane. These parameters can be found in the derived transfer function of the system. Here, ML is the load weight, MT is the weight of the trolley, FT is the force acting on the trolley, G is the gravitational constant, L is the length of the cable, VL is the viscous dampening coefficient of friction of the lifted load, VT is the viscous dampening coefficient of friction of the trolley, X is the position of the trolley, X dot is the linear velocity of the trolley, X double dot is the acceleration of the trolley, theta is the swinging angle, theta dot is the angular velocity, and theta double dot is the angular acceleration. Two sets of equations of motion were derived to describe the system. The top equations represent the nonlinear interpretation of the two-dimensional overhead crane motion, while the bottom equations represent the linearized version of the system. The remainder of the calculations and simulations used throughout this presentation utilize the linearized set of equations. Here is the calculated transfer function of the system. These equations include the previously stated mathematical parameters. The transfer functions represent a ratio of positional output over the input force applied to the trolley. The two transfer functions are displacement of the trolley over input force, x over ft, and the angular position of the load over the input force, theta over ft. Various types of PID controller tuning and optimization systems were explored via simulation using MATLAB and Simulink. The goal of the implemented PID controller is to control the displacement of the trolley with the intended result to minimize the angular position of the load as much as possible. The four methods include the Ziegler-Nichols method, the genetic algorithm, the artificial bee colony algorithm, and a method which involved fine tuning. Each of the simulations were conducted with the intent to compare and select the best control system parameters, the proportional gain, KP, the integral gain, KI, and the derivative gain, KD. The first optimization method used for determining the PID controller coefficients is the Ziegler-Nichols method. This method aims to obtain a 25% maximum overshoot in the step response. The Ziegler-Nichols method operates by setting the integral and derivative gains to zero, while the proportional gain is increased from zero until it reaches the ultimate gain. 
At this point, the output of the control loop has consistent oscillations from which the oscillation period is determined. Using the oscillation period and the ultimate gain, the proportional, integral, and derivative gains can be set. The Ziegler-Nichols tuning rules are widely used to tune PID controllers in which the plant dynamics are not precisely known. The second optimization method used in the modeling is the genetic algorithm. The genetic algorithm is an iterative process which begins with a population of randomly generated solutions. Within the population, each iteration is referred to as a generation. For the algorithm to work correctly, two functions are necessary. The first function is used to describe the genetic representation of the solution domain, and the second is a fitness function to evaluate the solution domain. Inside each generation, the overall correctness of every individual solution is determined. The more correct solutions are stochastically selected from the current population and each solution is modified to form a new generation. The process then repeats. The algorithm terminates when either a maximum number of generations is produced or a satisfactory solution has been achieved. The third optimization method used is the artificial bee colony algorithm. The algorithm was inspired by the intelligent foraging behavior of honeybees. The algorithm is specifically based on the model for the foraging behavior of honeybee colonies. The model consists of three essential components, employed foraging bees, unemployed foraging bees, and food sources. The first two components, employed and unemployed foraging bees, search for rich food sources, which is the third component, close to their hive. The model also defines two leading modes of behavior, which are necessary for self-organizing and collective intelligence. The recruitment of foragers to rich food sources resulting in positive feedback and abandonment of poor sources by foragers causing negative feedback. To apply ABC, the considered optimization problem is first converted to the problem of finding the best parameter vector, which minimizes an objective function. Then, the artificial bees randomly discover a population of initial solution vectors and then iteratively improve them by employing the strategies of moving towards better solutions by a means of a neighbor search mechanism while abandoning poor solutions. The fourth optimization method is a fine slash manual tuning method in which the various gains were changed based off of the results from the previous controllers. By trial and error in conjunction with fine tuning, the proportional, integral, and derivative gains were varied until the output was within a more suitable and desirable range. The quantitative results will be compared in a later slide. The simulated model used a load mass of 15 kilograms, a combined trolley and bridge mass of 25 kilograms, a unit step input for the force on the trolley, a gravitational acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared, a cable length of 1.5 meters, a viscous damping coefficient of friction on the lifted load of 0.1 newton seconds per meter, and a viscous damping coefficient of friction on the trolley of 0.25 newton seconds per meter. MATLAB's optimization toolbox was used to implement each algorithm and obtain the various gains for each Simulink model. The input to all Simulink models consists of a unit step input of the force on the trolley, while the horizontal displacement of the trolley is controlled using a PID controller. The angular displacement of the load is monitored. The ziegler nichols Simulink model utilizes the following selected gains, a proportional gain, Kp, of 166, an integral gain, Ki, of 1.1415, and a derivative gain, Kd, of 0 0.2854. The genetic algorithm Simulink model utilizes a proportional gain, Kp, of 392.2652, an integral gain, Ki, of 189.8355, and a derivative gain, Kd, of 422.6328. The artificial bee colony Simulink model utilizes a proportional gain, Kp, of 348.3816, an integral gain, Ki, of 189.8355, and a derivative gain, Kd, of 422.6328. The fine slash manually tuned Simulink model utilizes a proportional gain Kp of 233, an integral gain Ki of 0 0.2, and a derivative gain Kd of 500. 
The linear displacement of the four Simulink models were plotted over 100 seconds on the same graph for comparison. It can be seen that the Ziegler-Nichols method was not an appropriate solution to the problem, while the genetic and artificial bee colony algorithms provided reasonable controlling of the linear displacement with minimal maximum overshoots. The fine slash manually tuned algorithm provided the lowest maximum overshoot, but exhibited the third largest rise time. The angular displacement of the load was monitored over 100 seconds. Similarly, it can be seen that the Ziegler-Nichols tuning rules did not provide an acceptable control solution to the problem. Again, the fine slash manually tuned method yielded the lowest angular deflections of an approximate range of 2.5 degrees from the purely vertical position, while the genetic and bees algorithms ranged around approximately plus or minus 5 degrees from the vertical position. The quantitative results lead to the conclusion that the most optimal choice for controlling the sway of the load is the fine slash manually tuned method. The quantitative results lead to the conclusion that the most optimal choice for controlling the sway of the load is the fine slash manually tuned method. It exhibited the lowest maximum overshoot at a mere 0.271% and a reasonable rise time of 4.45 seconds. The genetic and artificial bee colony algorithms are both reasonable applications, with the genetic algorithm resulting in a lower maximum overshoot of 23.266% as compared to the 36.528% overshoot introduced by the artificial bee colony algorithm. As depicted previously, the Ziegler-Nichols tuning method yielded the worst results, with a maximum overshoot of 69.3% and an extremely large rise time of 474.7 seconds.